Hey everyone, welcome back. Patrick here. I am coming to you from Psalm 101. Psalm 101, it's only eight verses, so I might as well read the whole thing. It's a wonderful Psalm of David, but as you read this, I can almost picture Jesus saying the exact same thing. So let's see, do you remember in, o in the Old Testament, David was called a man after God's own heart? A man after God's own heart. So if he's a man after God's own heart, he must have had Jesus' heart. So when we, when we read what David wrote, we should hear the heart of Jesus through what he wrote, okay? Because he's, he's a man after God's own heart, they're one and the same. There's unity there. David was by far, um, by no means perfect, uh, but we see the heart of Christ through his writing. He says, I will sing of your love and justice to you, O Lord. I will sing praise. I will be careful to lead a blameless life. When will you come to me? I will walk in my house with a blameless heart. I think that word blameless is a key word. I will set before my eyes no vile thing. So think about where his focus is. The deeds of faithless men I hate, they will not cling to me. Men of perverse heart, shall be far from me. I have nothing to do with evil. Whoever slanders his neighbor in secret, him will I put to silence. Whoever has haughty eyes and a proud heart, him will I not endure. My eyes are on the faithful in the land, that they may dwell with me. He whose walk is blameless will minister to me. No one who practices deceit would dwell in my house. No one who speaks falsely will stand in my presence. Every morning I will put to silence all the wicked in the land. I will cut off every evildoer from the city of the Lord. And that's it, okay? So I read something once, I don't understand much. I've got to break it down. I've got to color code. I've got to highlight. I've got to put lines to, to, to break off different sections in scripture. Here's what I see. Number one, we see in the heart of David, a commitment to be separate from evil. I see no vile thing, faithless, perverse, slander, pride, evil, lies, deceit, wickedness. Those are all the words that he mentions in this psalm. He says, I want nothing to do with it. Nothing at all. I'm consecrated. I'm set apart. That's not me anymore. And as believers, the flesh has been crucified and we are called not to live according to the flesh, to walk in the ways of the world that we used to be a part of, but to be separate, to be holy, to be set apart. Right? We've, we've gone from darkness to light, to live as children of the light. So we see in the heart of David, the same heart that was in Christ. He says, I'm going to have nothing. I'm going to walk blameless before my father in heaven, before my God. So there's a desire for blamelessness, holiness. And there's, there's the flip side of that coin is separation from evil. And then you think, where are his eyes? He mentions uh, the word eyes twice, verse three and verse six. He says, my eyes will be on the pursuit of blamelessness. My eyes will be on faithfulness. All right. His eyes are on the Lord because the very definition of holiness and blamelessness, where is our target? What's our example? It's Jesus, right? So if we're going to be separate from wickedness, we're not looking at that anymore. Our focus is not on that. He says, I'm putting that off, putting off the old man. And my focus, my eyes are on Jesus. My eyes are on the father who is the perfect picture. He's the target of holiness and faithfulness and goodness. So here's the question for us. Where is your focus? Do you have a heart like Jesus, like David, that is committed to separating from evil and committed to pursuing holiness and blamelessness and spiritual maturity in Christ? Now, the practice of that might be shaky, okay? But I said, is this, is this the condition of your heart? Is this the desire of your heart? Because I believe that by grace, by faith, God will honor the desire of your heart. So if we can look to him right now, perhaps we should pray and I'll lead us. Lord, I pray that each one of our hearts would be inclined away from, to separate from, to be consecrated, um, to remove all evil, wickedness and sin in our lives and to be set apart 
for blamelessness and holiness and goodness and Christ-likeness within our lives. Keep our eyes on the things of God, not on the things of the world. Keep our eyes on the things of light, not on the kingdom of darkness. We simply pray in faith that if we surrender this appeal to you, this heartfelt appeal, that you will receive this prayer, that you will insert the presence of your spirit and your grace, and that you will continue to work by your power to conform us into the image of Christ. Amen. All right, so this is Psalm 101. Take a look at that when you get a chance. Verses 1 through 8, a Psalm of David, but also gives you a picture. It's almost as if Jesus is saying this himself. He's the perfect example of this Psalm, to which David is a sub-example, even though he's the author. Um, This is wonderful. Can you relate? Can you step into the shoes of Jesus? Can you step into the shoes of David and be able to say the same thing from your heart? All right, until next time, God bless.